So I'm starting off the guide with Awakening because you get a really good sense of the various types of cancers on Warrior and also it is a lot easier to handle than pre-awakening. But before I actually jump into the Awakening spells themselves, I've made a small skill guide on the screen right now. So the green skills are the skills that you actually need in order to perform the stuff that I'm going to show here. Uh, blue stuff are things that you should definitely get if you have more skill points to share. And actually when talking about Q cancelling, I'm gonna talk about most of the blue skills as well, so definitely get it uh, if you have the skill points to share. I'm also gonna have one for uh, pre-awakening, when you know I'm actually gonna talk about pre-awakening, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. So, head chase, you know, press shift in any direction. Uh, if the ability is off cooldown, it will actually be an iframe. It's an iframe every 3 seconds. An iframe is a point in time where you cannot be damaged nor CC'd. Uh, it is unfortunately unprotected off cooldown, but we will play around that. What does it mean that it's unprotected? If you're really new to the game, it means that you can be CC'd in it. So, Solar Flare is completely unprotected. Uh, you can, you know, see it on the screen right now how it looks like. If you chain these two together, uh, you will actually cover a great distance. These two spells flow together really well. Uh, one thing about this combo is, you know, Head Chase is an iframe of cooldown. Some of the iframe part actually lingers onto the Solar Flare part. Not to mo all of it though. The end of Solar Flare will still be unprotected and you will be still CC'd in it. And how you should use this combination of Head Chase into Solar Flare. Uh, I usually use it to reposition, you know, dodge stuff in 1v1s. It also makes you become less predictable if you do a sideways head chase, because everyone expects the warrior to do a forward one. But if you just want to get closer to someone, then uh, just do a forward one to cover a bit more distance. It kind of depends on the situation. Uh, also, one thing, you can not trigger head chase into solar flare if you head chase backwards. So, you know, keep that in mind. And before we jump into the advanced cancel, I really wanted to talk about Slashing the Dead. So, Slashing the Dead is a super armor, uh, but it is unprotected in the start and in the end. Super armor means you cannot be CC'd and you also take a bit less damage. Uh, Slashing the Dead can be mouse moved if you want. Uh, it's not really beneficial, but it is possible. Mouse move, you need to enable it in the settings if you want. But I personally don't really see the point of mouse moving when you can just change the direction of your camera and it pretty much does the same thing when it comes to slashing the dead of course. Charging Frost is a different story, we will get there. I really wanted to talk about this, the beginning and the end of slashing the dead being unprotected and Solar Flare's ending being unprotected. We will play around this with various cancers which is also the main reason we will jump into them before covering the pre-awakening kit and covering the whole of Awakening Kit, because I feel like learning these cancels are actually way more beneficial to you as a warrior than knowing every single spell that you have. These cancels are what keeps warrior uh, really insanely good right now, so you have to learn these. Out of all of the cancels on warrior, we will start off with block cancelling, or as I like to call it, Q cancelling. Q cancelling is when you are able to cancel out of the animation of a spell, while holding down Q or your block. This is extremely helpful to cancel out of unprotected parts of various spells and it also has another use. It can potentially speed up the animation that you are gonna cast after the Q block. Uh, let, me, let me demonstrate, it's confusing as fuck. Now, Q cancelling may sound extremely complicated, so let's try and actually practice it. Uh, I highly recommend binding Overwhelm to your skill bar or hot bar or your skill slots, whatever you're into nowadays, uh, because it's it's a pretty useful spell to Q cancel. Uh, later on, I will actually show you a couple of clips of uh, Q cancelling Pulverize and Balance Strike as well. Your only option is not just Q-cancelling Overwhelm, you know, you can do Pulverize, we will do Balance Strike as well a bit later on. Uh, you're not limited to one thing. So what you need to do is use I use 3 from my quick slot. then as soon as Overwhelm's 
float happens as soon as it's CC hits, I press Q and immediately press Reckless Blow. If you actually perform it well, then you won't even see the charging part of Reckless. You know, how you normally, if you hold down Reckless, the charging part will happen. If you do it well enough, you won't actually see that happening. And I'll show some clips of Q cancelling into Merciless as well, Q cancelling into Gravedig. Uh, you can do virtually anything that you want to. Its use is very apparent in combos and movement as well. You can see that you will become more protected while also becoming way faster overall if we Q cancel the spell before slashing the dead. You know, talking about Q cancelling and combos, there's the classic example of Overwhelm Q cancel into slashing the dead. You can see that everything becomes so much faster. Here are some awakening spells that cannot be Q-cancelled, and here are some pre-awakening spells, I will show them on the screen. We will talk about them later, but for now we will talk about how to cancel these awakening spells that we cannot cancel with Q-cancelling. One of the other awakening cancels is Balance Strike. Now, I have showed you a couple of clips of uh, Balance Strike but I haven't actually introduced it to you yet. Uh, Balance Strike is a spell that can cancel out Armor Break and Head Chase. It's also one of the spells that you can cancel Solar Flare with from the beginning of the video, if you still remember. Uh, it can cover great distance. While it is unprotected in nature, it can be the perfect spell to dodge around stuff with or confuse the opponent by having some unnatural movements. And it's also one of my favorite spells to Q cancel with. For example, Reckless Blow and Sashing the Dead. Reckless Blow and Sashing the Dead are the two spells that work really well after a Q cancelled balance strike. Uh, I personally love using these two. Hello lads, this is me post editing. I never really showed you head chase into balance strike, into head chase into soda flare. And I feel like it's it can be really useful to use in a lot of situations. Now there are still three skills left in Awakening that we don't know how to cancel. Now this is Frenzied Strikes, Reckless Blow and Slashing the Dead. Fuck saying, <laughs> fuck saying Frenzied Strikes bro, what the fuck. Now so Frenzied Strikes can only be cancelled by Head Chase after the second slash in it. And I'm not even exaggerating, you should never in your life use this spell in PvP, it's absolutely garbage. Also you should always lock Frenzied Strikes and just put it on your hotbar somewhere, cause the normal controls for frenzied strikes are absolutely garbage, so you should lock it. Okay, so the two spells that we don't know how to cancel are uh, Slashing the Dead and Reckless Blow. Now both of these are gonna be cancelled with the same mechanic called uh, C-Swap. C-Swap I would consider to be a worse version of Q cancelling, but C swapping existed before Q cancelling, so you know it's to be expected. You press C and you change back into pre awakening form. Now, this is unprotected when going from awakening to pre awakening, but it's the best thing that we have to cancel out of Reckless Blow and uh, Sashing the Dead as well. Now, with Reckless Blow, uh, you can cancel it at any point, it's perfect for cancelling uh, Reckless Blow. Sashing the Dead, you can cancel the end of it, but you cannot cancel the beginning part of it. Now, this does actually help you stay way more protected than if you did not use. This mechanic and every single awakening spell except frenzied strikes can be cancelled with this mechanic and i've already showed you this but uh, head chase into solar flare into balance strike q cancel balance strike into slashing the dead hold c as soon as slashing the dead starts and hold q as well and you will swap back to pre-awakening and you will be in block fully protected now when you're actually c swapping you're not protected but it, it does get you into protection faster than if you were not C-swapping. Because slashing the dead's end animation is extremely buggy. So you need, you need to learn this mechanic. Hello lads, it's me post-editing again. Uh, one thing to note is that you're still gonna be CC'd out of C-swap every once in a while. But overall, it's gonna be happening way less than if you were not using this mechanic. We are pretty much done with all of the mechanics. Like all of the advanced mechanics. But there are still some things to be said about awakening cancers and movement both so there are a couple of spells that flow together well i'm not gonna list all of them 
but for example take Crackless into Ankle Break. If you use those spells after each other, they are extremely fast. But if you use Ankle Break after like any other spell, it's gonna be really slow or relatively slow. And uh, Warrior has these sort of things, these flows that are not stated. Uh, you kind of have to figure this out for yourself, but do keep in mind that these do exist. You will learn these after spending a bit of time in BA, I'm sure. You guys are smart, you can do it, I believe. Another one of these skill combinations is Rack blow into slashing the dead. This sometimes fixes the problem of getting cc'd in reckless. I prefer c swapping in high fps situations. If I'm casting reckless, I've already showed a couple of clips of this. In 1v1 for example in BA, I would rather press c most of the time and go into pre-awakening and be in block instantly or use a spell from pre-awakening. This is because reckless into slashing is really buggy sometimes and I don't like it too much. But it is, it is very good. It is very good. You should use it. In low fps situations, Reckless into Sashing is way better than Reckless into Sea Swap. Now there's also one spell that I haven't really talked too much about that's Sideways Slash. It's the basic attack of Warrior. You can actually use this to go downhill from, for example, RBF. If you feel like you're stuck all the time on top of RBF, then this is perfect. You can also use it to add some more style into your movement. I'm gonna show you some examples on screen right now. And it's also a nice way to activate Armor Break. You use this in PvE all the time. Now we are almost done with the Awakening Kit of Warrior. Some other not very notable cancels are Armor Break cancels a couple of spells, Burning Moxie cancels a couple of spells, and Solar Flare can cancel a couple of spells. But it's uh, it's more for comboing than uh, movement, so I just brushed over it. And until now I've been relatively quiet about desync and gaps in spells, relatively. But the worst offenders in Awakening are Balance Strike, desyncing you and ceasing you with a spell that you were not hit by, you actually dodged by using balance strike but it just desyncs you getting cc'd in the beginning of spells and at the end of grave dig and beginning of great grave dig getting cc'd in the beginning of spells and getting cc'd in hat chase these are not your fault per se these will eventually happen to you even if you use perfect cancels but do note that this is the game that we're playing it's not your fault as a warrior but that doesn't mean you that you shouldn't keep improving. And now time for the pre-awakening of Warrior. So I've made a skill build for uh, pre-awakening as well. Uh, you can clearly see it on screen. Green ones are the ones that you absolutely have to get in order to do the things that I'm about to do. And the blue ones you should get when you have some more skill points to share. Uh, I've crossed out meditation and shield strike because I think you should lock them. Those spells usually just get in the way with nothing to offer. And from the second pre-awakening picture, uh, I've crossed out Charging Slash and uh, Ultimate Ground Smash. Those ones you definitely should not have. Uh, charging Slash just gets in the way as well. And Ultimate Ground Smash is unprotected. So you will be CC'd in it instead of being protected by Ground Smash. And it, it's the same stuff. I have Deep Frost's flows as yellow. I will explain later why. It is, I don't recommend you get them, but I will state why you should get them if you were to get them. Now that we are ready to talk about pre-awakening, uh, we are not gonna start off with C-swap and Q-canceling like last time. We will talk about the ultimate spells. These are pretty much the core of pre-awakening gameplay. The spells that I would consider to be the ultimate spells are Chopping Kick, Shield Charge, Deep Frost, and Forward Slash. These are all spells that can be used during any spell, but but you need to unlock the ultimate version of these spells in order to have the eligibility to even cancel things with them. Of course there is a caveat to this, for example, Chopping Kick, you can't cancel it with any of these listed spells. You are able to cancel the end of it by C-swapping, and it is actually one of Chopping Kick's main uses in combat. It is a super armor spell, and if you C-swap from pre-awakening to awakening, that is a forward guard. You can stay completely protected while switching to awakening. Now, you might be asking me, but wasn't C-swap unprotected? 
So C swap is protected from pre-awakening to awakening, but not vice versa. So from awakening to pre-awakening, it's not protected. Chopping kick is also extremely useful for getting a Blit Coaster to the enemy or enemy raid or even escaping. Later on, I will have a completely protected movement combo that you can use to escape from situations. And that will include chopping kick into C swap as well. It is an extremely useful tool, especially if you can position your character in a way where you will make use of the forward guard all the time. Uh, chopping kick can also be used to trigger lingering crit, but uh, I will talk about this in an upcoming video. Shield charge overall, a really solid forward guard skill. Uh, you can control the direction that you're going in by moving your mouse. It's not the same as mouse movement, uh, it's just like slashing the dead where you change your camera. And it is a really good gap closing skill. Defrost, if you get the flows of this spell, these flows are the best way to go down from high places. To go downhill it is extremely useful because you will never ever get the falling animation while using this spell. But I personally don't like using these flows since sometimes they might trigger during combat and also I really like doing counter into normal deep frost to trigger an air smash and throw the opponent away. Since the flow would be triggered if this happened I personally don't like using the flows but if you don't mind these disadvantages of not being able to do counter into normal deep frost then by all means get it but for me it's I don't like it. Forward slash our last ultimate spell is completely unprotected. I, I like to use forward slash into C to very quickly swap to awakening. This is hard to punish if you use it at the right time, holding down Q, forward and left click. It's a very nice gap closer. It is completely unprotected and uses up your stamina. In a couple of seconds, its only use is PvE unless you're just an absolute bowler just running at the enemy with this. I, I would not recommend using this too much in PvP unless you know the enemy is not gonna CC you. Now that we have covered both shield charge and chopping kick, I want to talk about one of my favorite things to do. That being quick counter into whirlwind slash. Let's start off with how you trigger quick counter. So you can trigger it in three easy ways. Sideways step, shield charge and chopping kick. You can also trigger it with evasion but naturally speaking you should just lock evasion just so you don't press it accidentally in combat. Now the spell that you need to unlock is whirlwind slash. These can be activated after a quick counter or after swapping from awakening to pre-awakening and after you swap from awakening to pre-awakening you have a small time frame to press whirlwind slash or down and right click. Uh, just play around with it uh, you will get the timing down in no time I'm sure. And also you can activate it after a quick counter like we said and this is not the most protected way to go around this is like completely unprotected but stylish as fuck this is my favorite combination of these spells it's shield charge counter whirlwind slash chopping kick counter whirlwind slash forward slash sideways step counter whirlwind and repeat forward slash sideways step counter whirlwind until you have wp this consumes a lot of wp so i love using this kind of movement so i always have wp potions with me if you you know don't want to be wasting WP potions then don't bother. Uh, I really wanted to show you this because I love doing this and I get asked pretty frequently what sort of movement I'm doing in between packs. And now we're actually done with the ultimate cancel spells and my autistic obsession with whirlwind slash as well. Now before we actually jump into Q cancelling I want to cover what sort of Rabam skills you should take. First off you have the option between seismic strike and frenzied spear. Now since this is a movement guy we will be 100% taking Frenzied Spear since Seismic Strike is a spell where you're locked in place. It's kind of like Ground Smash but takes a bit longer to charge but it's also a super armor just like Ground Smash. It's a really nice skill for uh, tier 1 node wars I would say where you can stay alive for a little longer and actually not die uh, while casting Seismic Strike but I've always been a very big fan of Frenzied Spear. It's such an amazing spell, how you can just jump around opponents with it if you actually don't get hit during it, it's such an awesome spell. I think you should go Frenzied Spear personally, unless you do tier 1 node wars, you know. And second we have the option between Shield Tide and Shield Assault. Uh, it's like, it's not even a competition, Shield Tide is just so good. 
it's shit that is so fucking good. Its first part is a super armor and its second part is a forward guard and if you've ever played warrior or heard the warrior say something or complain about their classes they usually complain about their lack of protection. So shield tide being a an extra super armor that we can use to our heart's content it's uh, it's quite amazing you should take it. It's also a very useful spell for 1v1s. Uh, it's just overall such a good spell. Back to friendly spear for a bit, it can help you close the gap between you and the opponent really quickly, if used right. You can actually use raw bombs from your awakening and it will switch you back to pre-awakening without the need of C-swapping. So what spells can and cannot be cancelled by Q-cancel? Charging Frost, Coping Kick, Frenzied Spear, Piercing Spear and Scars of Dust first part cannot be cancelled with Q-cancelling. All of the other spells are good to go but these five are not. Okay, so what the fuck do we do with these? Charging Frost has multiple dashes and you can only cancel out of it in between these dashes with either chopping kick or walking backwards. There's one more thing to it. If you run into someone during Charging Frost, it will do a weird animation in which you are kind of stuck in, you are completely logged into animation and you are unprotected as well. Even though Charging Frost is a forward guard, if you hit someone that animation that it will do will be unprotected. I get asked this a lot on how to cancel that uh, lock-in animation. That animation is kind of like pregnancy. It's better to prevent it from happening than to try and get rid of it when you already, already have it, you know. Uh, your best bet is using chopping kick but it won't completely cancel it it will just cancel a small portion of it hello lads post editing again uh, i forgot to mention that you can mouse move charging frost really well unlike slashing the dead it actually works insanely well i haven't mentioned this but charging frost is actually a cancel in awakening it can be extremely useful to cover some distance and it flows really well together it, it feels really nice chopping kick i've already covered in the ultimate skill section uh you know you cannot really cancel it other than c swapping Frenzied Spear and Piercing Spear can both be cancelled with ultimate skills. So we are good in that department, you know, use Chopping Kick or, or whatever you want to. And Scars of Dust, generally, the very beginning cannot be cancelled, but after the beginning it can be cancelled with ultimate stuff. Q cancel it as well after the beginning part, and you can C-swap after the second slash. Overall, Scars of Dust is a nice forward guard to rotate if you want to get a bit closer to the enemy. Uh, you need to bind it to your action board though, because you cannot cast it otherwise. So I've kind of mentioned this in passing already but there are spells that you can cast in awakening that are pre-awakening spells and these spells will instantly put you back to pre-awakening these spells are incredibly useful for example ground smash charging frost scars of dusk and grab and there are bombs as well these are all incredibly useful in their own right just imagine the level of complexity that comes from having these you can you can actually stay protected while swapping back to pre-awakening with shield hydro bomb or ground smash and it's it's an amazing thing other stuff to mention you know sideways cut uh completely unprotected spell but can be used to style on the opponents can trigger lingering crit can trigger a quick counter also decent skill to actually go downhill with kind of like horizontal slash in awakening uh Upper Shield Strike, an amazing forward guard spell. It's very quick. You can do something that I like to call desync grab. Uh, I'm gonna show you an example on screen right now. If you press grab at the perfect time after uh, Upper Shield Strike does, it, does its animation, it looks like you actually grab someone from really far away because it desyncs on their screen kinda. And also Heavy Strike, Whirlwind Slash. Now I only included this since I talked so much about Whirlwind Slash. Uh, after a counter happens, you can do the Heavy Strike Whirlwind Slash and cast Whirlwind Slash from that point on. It adds a bit more style. Uh, you really, You really shouldn't be using this either. But you know, just, just something to consider. Now I briefly touched on this either, sideways step, uh, you can kinda spam it. Uh, you can kinda spam, cancel it with forward slash, it's kinda fun to use, but it's... Other than to trigger counter, I don't really find a use for it. It has no collision to it, so you can kinda go behind mobs with it. I sometimes do that in history, but it, it consumes way too much stamina, not worth. 
Now, there are only two cancers left that you guys don't know of yet. Uh, one of them is called the Reckless Sea Swap. Now, it is really confusing. I've never really done it before. I've tried to do it and it was actually really easy to do so. Uh, you're supposed to use Reckless and press C and a quick slotted ability at the same time. And you will perform that ability way faster. Uh, if you actually look at the screen, it's gonna be apparent, you know, how to do it. I have uh, bindings as well, so you can follow it. I used Gravedig from the Quicksort. The last cancer that I wanted to talk about was the Slashing the Dead Grab cancer. Now, this is not something that I found. This is actually Monk's finding. Uh, he's in the warrior discord, you know, be sure to tell him, thanks for finding this shit. Uh, he actually came into my chat once, I remember, and uh, he linked me as well. Or like, he asked me about it as well. So, uh, I'm glad that I got to learn of this, this is really useful. So, in the middle of your slashing the dead, you start holding down C and E. And then you can perform a really quick grab from uh, slashing the dead. So now that we're done with that, I I'm gonna give you some tips. Uh, we're pretty much done with the video, I'm just gonna talk about how to a couple of uh, things that you should watch out for like for example how about leaving rbf spawn you know lots of people get stuck in midair or uh, just cannot leave rbf spawn and uh, i feel for uh, getting out of rbf spawn for me sideways cut from pre-awakening and sideways slash or horizontal slash from uh, awakening are the easiest way to get out from rbf spawn the last thing like literally the last thing that i wanted to talk about i'm so sleepy i haven't slept in so long is uh, escaping from group fights. Uh, let it, it could be a node war, an RBF, a siege, a GVG situation. It could be anything, you know. The, the thing about it is, early on, you use Shield Tide, only the first part of it, then chopping kick. Then, while you're sea swapping, you look back at the place that you're escaping from to have the forward guard and not get CC'd in the back. Then use head chase into solar balance that we've already learned how to do into charging frost. Charging frost is a cancel in awakening, actually. I don't know if I mentioned that. It's one of the best things that happened to Warrior recently. The charging frost cancel in awakening feels so smooth and it's amazing. Hey, what's up, lads? This is me recording this video for the. I think it was the seventh time uh, I messed up the conversion of the thing that I'm recording right now. Uh, so thanks for watching so far, whatever. Thank you for, thank you to Pascal uh, for actually beta testing my video. I sent him the video yesterday and he replied really quickly. He was really nice about it. There were a couple of things wrong with the video, but uh, I, I managed, managed to fix it. So I'm, I'm thankful to him. Uh, you know, I will probably have a couple of other guide videos out in a couple of weeks. I haven't really decided yet because I have an exam season. We will see. I don't know. Follow me on YouTube. Follow me on Twitch. Follow me wherever you would feel like, you know. And that's pretty much it. Bye.